As the Dubs preseason kicks off, they'll be without Draymond Green for the first four to six weeks of the season, who's out with an ankle sprain. All-time great point guards Stephen Curry and Chris Paul are finding chemistry. While Klay Thompson hasn't signed a contract extension yet, he's going to be defending a new position with Draymond out, according to Steve Kerr. Rudy Gay is still looking to solidify a roster spot, but taking rim-protecting menace Trace Jackson Davis with pick number 57 seems to have worked out, given Draymond's injury. And the same can be said for the pickup of Dario Saric, who's capable of playing both the 4 and 5 spot. Nevertheless, the Golden State Warriors are incredibly unpredictable in 23-24, so stay tuned for everything you need to know about the franchise with 5 chips, and a prediction of how they'll fare this year. Before breaking down that, just 17.5% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Also leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. So while it was only a year and a half ago, the Warriors 2022 championship feels like it was in a whole different universe. From losing Otto, Nemi, among others, to the punch, to barely sneaking into the playoffs, to barely upsetting the Sacramento Kings in seven, to getting embarrassed by LA, to trading Jordan Poole to Washington for Chris Paul after CP3 was moved to the nation's capital in a deal involving Brad Beal, the Bay Area culture has without a doubt taken a hit. Still, with the NBA's all-time leader in three-pointers made, Wardell Stephen Curry II, a man who's tied up LeBron in rings despite entering the league six years after James, and was the provable best player for all of those championship teams, given Durant's never gotten it done without him, having the single-handed firepower of a Steph that still seems to have plenty left in the tank, that alone gives you a chance at being a contender. Despite the fact that Curry will be 36 years of age when the 2024 playoffs kick off, Steph coming off a record-setting postseason in 2023 should give Dub Nation confidence in him. Curry set the all-time record for points scored in a Game 7 against Sacramento, only to have that record erased by Jason Tatum around later. Steph's 50-piece where he made seven three-pointers saw him use kick-and-relocate actions to perfection, as his movement off the ball and elusiveness is probably the greatest we've ever seen from a player on the offensive end. From knocking down 31-foot bombs in traffic, to utilizing slight in-and-out dribbles at the top of the arc to bait jumper before getting downhill, to punishing defenders with combos of wizard kind, in addition to being goaded working without the rock, Curry's also one of the greatest shot creators off the dribble. Therefore, the dubs are in good hands, especially considering after Green recovers in a month or two, the big three responsible for four of the last nine world titles will be intact. According to Curry himself, CP didn't try to kick him off the court this time, and the addition of a fourth Hall of Famer is off to a good start. When it comes to the depth, that's the biggest concern for Golden State, because losing Dante DiVincenzo to the New York Knicks leaves more pressure on Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody to finally get over the hump in their third years. For Jonathan Kaminga, while Dub Nation is expecting this man to break out into the second coming of Tracy McGrady this season, he just has to stay consistent with his three-point shot and be what Otto Porter Jr. was for the Dubs during their title run, a reliable rotation piece on the wing. Obviously, it'd be nice if John made a superstar jump, I'm not denying that, but if he can just compliment the likes of Curry, Thompson, and Green, that's all that really matters. Meanwhile, D-Flo's Paul Pierce comparisons for Moses Moody haven't worked out so far in the slightest bit. Steve Kerr has to trust Moses through his mistakes more, but Moody has to be a lot more aggressive when he gets the chance. This season for the dubs is probably going to go one of two ways. Either Kaminga and Moody break out, and that'll make up for the lack of depth, or they'll be too thin to compete with the top teams. And don't get it twisted, I like the pickup of Corey Joseph, and you can still count on Gary Payton II, who we'll get to later, for a great two-way effort. But Kaminga and Moody stepping up is more important than just one factor. If John and Moses can't be relied upon for 10 to 15 points per game each, on say 45 plus percent shooting, and 35 plus percent three-point shooting at the very least, I think that causes problems in terms of the Warriors' ability to put pressure on opponents 1 through 15. Things will be a lot less tense for Steve Kerr if these two kids with limitless potential can finally drop their egos and buy into his system to get Curry and Thompson open looks. Kaminga and Moody, knowing the system supersedes anything else, will give the two 21-year-olds the best chance at success.
they shouldn't be creating off the bounce as much as they do. Kaminga simply slipping to the paint after setting picks, and Moses simply moving off flare screen and pin downs will get them more numbers than they assume. Whether it's Curry, Joseph, or Pajemski out there running the show, Moody and Kaminga playing off the ball more and buying into the offense is a make-or-break factor. We briefly mentioned Kerr's mindset, and ahead of facing the team that eliminated them, the nine-time NBA champion was locked in. The Lakers exposed us. We, you know, we were not a very well-rounded team last year, and so you know, thinking about that series, watching it, they were, you know, they bottled us up defensively, and we didn't have a counter. So we've, we've got to make sure we have counters this year. A developing storyline has been Clay Thompson being forced to guard bigger players with Green's injury. Given the Dubs will start a smaller lineup to make up for that in Chris, Clay, Wiggs, and Loon. Given how Clay maintained a wide stance and displayed elite lower body strength to hold James off the block when defending Braun in last year's first round, Thompson shouldn't have a problem locking down fours. Going back to the depth of this team, and rookie Trace Jackson Davis out of Indiana, who was fourth among all D1 NCAA players in blocked shots per game, was in my opinion the reason why GM Mike Dunleavy decided to pass on signing free agent center Dwight Howard. We talked about Jalen hood Shafino for LA in my last video. Jackson Davis was his teammate at Indiana last year, who led the Hoosiers in points, rebounds, and blocks. The man won't just be any other rookie, considering he averaged double-figure scoring in four college seasons, including 21 and 11 per game, as a senior. Former Toronto Raptor Rudy Gay has shown the ability to knock down game-winning shots throughout his 17-year NBA career. He's proved to have the ability to either be a star player or a supporting cast member. Rudy's playing for a contending caliber team for the first time since his early days with the Memphis Grizzlies. Since he was an athletic phenom who at one point was a number one scoring option with the Grizz, Gay went from the 6 to Sacktown to the Alamo City to then Utah, where Rudy played 18 minutes over 55 games for a number 5 seed in 21-22. Look for him to fit in well with the Warriors' outside shooting system if he makes the team, given he can be your typical pick-and-pop small ball 4, and also give you minutes as a small ball 5, or as a tall ball 3. Meanwhile, Usman Garuba has a spot locked down, given he signed a two-way contract. He'll be up and down from the G League, and the Warriors will be allowed to play him a maximum of 50 games due to that contract. At 6'8", 220, and just 21 years of age, Garuba's upside and stature give him every bit of potential. He played in 75 games for a number 14-seeded Houston team last season, and given his screen-setting, motor, and defensive wherewithal, Mike Dunleavy taking a chance on Usman's potential was a good call. Regarding Dario Saric, I left a link in the description where we talked about his acquisition, but Saric could realistically fill out that Nemanja Bielitsa high-energy stretch big role and the dubs could easily be D-Flow's main topic of conversation again if they have 2022 champ and all-defensive second-team player Gary Payton II stepping up. The young glove was banged up with a right abductor injury last season during his time in Portland and after his trade back to Golden State. He played through pain in the 2023 postseason, but Payton's going to be recuperated after a long offseason following Golden State's second-round exit, as he stated at training camp that he's ready to play all 82. Peyton II had an off year in 2022-23, but in terms of the overall makeup of this Warrior team, you can't not take into account that Gary is one of this team's most important players. But out of any X factor, Andrew Wiggins being with the team and avoiding being out for personal reasons is the biggest one. This narrative is one that's an elephant in the room, but bottom line is, the Dubs can't win without their 20 point per game score from 2022's NBA Finals in Andrew. But who slash what is the biggest X factor for Golden State in your opinion though? Let me know down below. Best answer gets a commenter shout out next video, and peace.